All right, guys, so this is going to be the video on how to draw the por portrait. I just wanted to go over really quick based off of the photographs and just FYI, like going and choosing your photographs. This is the reason why I wanted you guys to be able to run it through a black and white filter. So you have to not only submit to me the color photograph, but as well as the black and white photograph. So that way you can see the highlights, mid tones, and then the shadow work and so forth. My mom does have dimples here. Uh, like I mentioned to this particular class just a little bit before I started the video, but um, you know when you guys start with um, your photographs, this is why you need to run it through the black and white filter just to make sure that you're going to have the proper lighting on the photograph. Now, this one I was explaining just right now, just before I started the video again, uh, that the hairline on my mom's, you know, this was back in the time when they had like all that hairspray, like heavy hairspray uh, look to the hair where her hairline actually goes up here. And I can see it slightly, it's more difficult on the video screen, but it goes up here and then it comes like this and it goes like that. So she's got that big hairdo, very short structured over here in the back. But if this had a better background, I could see it a lot better in between the two. So be careful with the photograph that you guys are, are picking. This one, the reason why I like to pick it, strictly because of the amount of the head versus the ratio to the bottom that is showing. This is about the size that you guys need to concentrate when you're drawing on the full entire paper. I do want you to draw the head a little bit larger and then that way you only have to worry about shoulders on the bottom part of the eight by 10 photograph or the paper, okay? So if you have a picture of a full body shot, be aware that I want you guys to concentrate on this. So you might have to pick either another picture or if you can see, you know, the face very well, then you'll have to kind of just edit and kind of uh, go back and, and crop your photographs. OK, now, if I take a look at the one that I have of my father, this is another one that I've selected over in the past few years. Same thing. We have the head and then we've got mostly the shoulders. If I were to crop this image a little bit more, kind of like the way that I have the structure of my mother's, then it would, uh, you would see that it would be a lot better because then the size frame of the face will be better when I accommodate on the eight by 10 uh, paper. Now, if I'm looking at this one, I was um, going over quickly right before I restarted the video. You do notice that on this is a heavier flash versus this one, this has less flash. So, you, you know, back, this is again, during the era when they would use flash a lot for the studio shot, they still do, you know, like if you were to go take a Sears portrait or something like that, they're gonna use that photo uh, quality flash. So be very careful, you know, if you're using flash, I would prefer natural lighting. If you guys are gonna take your own photographs right now because you don't have something that you can already use, um, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you take natural lighting. I always suggest maybe standing by a, like a window, shutting off the lights in the room so that way you have window lighting or you can open up the door you know getting outside light is probably the best light to create shadows midtones and highlights for that purpose okay so at this point what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to use the one of my mother uh you know I'll, I'll also pick up the brightness on this a little bit more see if i can see it a little bit better as far as the contrast um, if I were to kind of lift it, you can kind of see a little bit of it. But again, video quality is not that great. So hopefully, uh, as far as the practice, if you want to just follow along with me uh, to draw my mom, that's fine. If you want to draw my mother just for the practice. Uh, and this is, again, just based off of how I'm going to show you guys how to align the actual eyes to how you're going to put it here down on paper, how to align the nose. So if you want to practice with yours already, just to get a quick practice of whichever one, because you already know exactly which one you are going to draw, which photograph you're going to draw, then go ahead and practice to yours just by looking at yours as you're doing your outlines, but following what I'm doing for this one as far as showing you guys about where to do certain placements of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, okay? So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to start off with an oval shape. So I'm going to draw it larger than what I have here. If I go by the face, so like, let's say from the bottom of her chin up to about, and usually what we go by is like where the skull would end or at least by the forehead area. Some people do it differently. So uh, usually you should think of it as a whole head frame. But, you know, like I said, I'm at this point going to do something about the size of my finger. So if I put my finger up to the size of, here where the original photograph is, it's a lot larger. So don't draw it too small. I'm gonna draw it maybe somewhere about like this size. So you can see 
compared to what I have here, it's a lot bigger. So if I put my finger up to it, more or less same size, at least from the top to the bottom. So if I put my pinky, my pinky is gonna be too small. It would have ended up right here. So this is why I need you guys to at least do something about this size. So it's about three inches more or less. That's the first step. Remember, if you're gonna write your steps, write them off here to the side. So that way it's almost like a little cheat sheet for you that you can go back and uh, just read your notes so you know how to approach to draw your actual drawing. Okay, so at this point, we're trying to draw somebody from frontal view. So be aware that if you're gonna choose a different type of picture, they're not gonna be looking dead straight on, they're looking off more to the side, maybe the nose has more of a side view and so forth like that. This next step is gonna be just a little bit different. So be very careful when you're drawing uh, the photograph that you've selected. So if we're doing dead straight forward, like they're looking at us, and even then hers is not dead straight forward. Like if it was, her head slightly tilted, if you can tell by the photograph, you know, if she had her head straight and I kind of put my line right here of what would be straight, you can kind of see that this part of the nose is a little bit more aligned with this part of the nose. So she's slightly with the tilt. So I'm going to take that into consideration and I'm going to draw my line slightly, you know, like you can kind of see this, this is straight. My line is just going to be just a little bit more because her line is slightly tilted. So if I was seeing somebody, so I'm just going to draw a line that goes right down the middle of where her placement is. If I was drawing somebody just to kind of give you a quick demonstration that is looking to the side. So just as a real quick, I'm going to put it right here off to the side. I am drawing this dark so you can actually see it because we notice that my lines are very light. It's hard to see, uh, but I'm going to draw this a little bit darker so you can see it. So if my person, let's say, was looking in this direction, and the center of their face was more on this side, then what you would do for that line, for those of you guys that are gonna attempt to draw something like that, it actually curves. So I would be splitting that circle right where the center of their face would be lying, which means that their nose would actually come out of this area and so forth like that. The eye structure would be different. So th it, that's why I'm teaching you guys facing forward first, because when you're drawing, uh, to the side and so forth, depending on if they're looking up or down, you know, because if they're looking down, then it's more this way. If they're looking up, then it's in this direction. This is why I teach you guys for portraits. I teach you guys looking straight ahead first. Okay. So for right now, since I'm going to be drawing my, this picture here and she's looking more forward, I'm going to draw this just with a slight tilt. And then if I pay attention to the line that comes across the face, depending on where um, you guys have yours, you know, if they're a little bit tilted like my mom's, this would be straight, but if I align it with my mom's, do you see how it kind of slightly tilts to the side? So I'm going to do the same thing for this. I'm going to like just the slightest tilt it because if I have my original line straight, it would be here. My line right now that I drew is more like that. So it's just slightly tilted to the side. Um, also, if I compare the, and I didn't mention this, but if you notice that the, the center of this circle is actually a little bit lower right here, and I drew my line a little bit above that, because if I look at the shape that is for her head here, the line in the middle of her face is actually about like right here, if I were to cut it in half, so that line that's going to be for the center of her eyes is just slightly above which is why I put this line just slightly above the middle, okay? So these are things that you guys need to think about yours when you're drawing your um, photographs. So now that we kind of have the major line, I am going to, I don't want you guys to do this. I kept this light on purpose because this is as light as you guys should have yours. I'm gonna go and draw it slightly darker for those of you guys that can't see it very well. I'm actually going to go and draw these. You don't do this. I'm only doing this so you can see what I am doing on screen and you can see it just slightly darker than what I have it because I want you guys to be able to follow along for those of you guys that might be struggling to see it. Okay, and I want it to cl be clear on camera. So this is why I'm going and pushing a little darker, but you guys shouldn't do it this dark. Keep it as light as possible, okay? So at this point, I want to explain a little bit something about the eyes. So when you guys are gonna start attempting to draw the eyes, 
you want to make sure that you are going to use, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen artists kind of hold their arm like away from their face and they're kind of going like this and they're doing this and they're trying to figure out uh, sizes and so forth. What they're doing in the moment, guys, is they are closing one eye and picking up their pencil and using it as a guide. And what they're doing, of course, from a distance, like more like this, but I'm going to do it close up to the actual picture itself so you can see what they're trying to look at. What they're doing is, is that they are coming here and they're trying to get like measurements in the face. So we're going to be doing that on this next step. Now, the first step I can guarantee you is going to be probably the easiest part because the explanation when it comes to separation of the eyes is the most important part because the distance from this part of the eye to this part of the eye to this part of the following, so this area, the spacing in between, then also the spacing from here to here should all be equal. If I were to take my pencil and I were to come here and just kind of mark it, like pretend this is a ruler, and I come here and then I put my finger here, you'll notice that it matches up right where the other eye starts. And then if I come right here, it's the same thing. So the distance in here needs to be evenly spaced. So what I'm going to do first, so this is the first thing you should do to get the eye structure. Start here in the middle and just draw two little dots of what you would think is a fair spacing for the middle of the two eyes first. Because it's in the center, once I have that spacing, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to come here and I am going to go like this so I can have the spacing correct. Then I'm going to place my finger here so I know that when I make this little dot over here in the side, the spacing from this, this to this, these two are exactly the same. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the opposite. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to check my spacing here. And then I'm going to come right here so I know that that other spacing is going to end right there. And if I do it like that, then I know that this right here has the same spacing here, same spacing here, same spacing here. And this is what people are doing when they're trying to do out measurements and so forth when they are drawing. Okay, that's what they're, that's what they're doing. So I'm going to be doing a lot of that. So make sure that you do pay attention when I do it. Now, if I'm looking at it, I can notice that I originally used this line up here uh, for all of these and I had used the bottom line. So I'm going to move this one up just a little bit, just because if not, my eyes are going to be all crooked. So make sure because if you have separate lines, like if you have multiple lines, like I accidentally drew a little bit of them, make sure it's all on the same line, okay, when you're doing this. So um, now the next step is going to look funny, okay? However, uh, when it comes to the next step, I need you guys to be aware that things like in the past when we've drawn other stuff, they look a little funny at first. And then when we start bringing out the details, they start looking a lot better. So what I'm going to do at this point is I have to also figure out my tear duct. When I draw the circle for the eye on the first one, I don't want to draw it from here to here. I need a little bit of spacing that I have to accommodate for my tear duct. So that circle that I draw here for when we draw the eyes, the way that I showed you guys how to draw, is actually going to be just a little bit smaller than that. Because remember, when we draw the eye, it's the eyeball, and then we have the tear duct that comes out of that circle. So if I come here, the spacing isn't at the eyeball. The spacing is including the tear duct. So be very careful. If you were to have drawn the circle where that original dot is that we just made, then you're going to have too little bit of spacing in between here, and it's going to look funny because it's going to look like their eyes are too close together. So be very careful when you do this particular step, okay? I will do the same thing for the other side. So I'm gonna make sure that where this dot is, I come in just a little bit for the accommodation of the tear duct. So that way, when I draw the circle that goes on this side, it is going to be the correct size and not too close to the other one, okay? So I'm going to try my best to kind of make them more or less. This one actually looks a little bit bigger. So if I want to go back and make it a little bit smaller, this is the time to do it. Don't wait till the next step because then it's going to look off. 
So you just want to make sure, and even then I still made it a little too small, I think because I took it off on both sides, but it was the top that needed to be made a little smaller. So I'm just going to go fix it right now while I'm doing it at the same time. So that way I don't necessarily uh, mess up on that. You want to try your best to get them the same size. If you feel like, well, maybe it's because I made this one too big. And honestly, it's because my circle, like if I look at it, was outside of that original dot. I said, this is the time to fix it. Don't wait till you start drawing all of the details and then it doesn't come out right. Now I know it looks a little funny. It looks almost like a little robot at this point just because they're circles and not necessarily the shape of the eyes. But the moment you start drawing the shape is where it's going to start looking like a person. Now I'm drawing my mother. So we're only working on outline only. I'm not gonna do too much shading. I'm Like I said, I might put a little bit of shading like on the sides of the nose, but just so that way I get it accommodated with some kind of, um shape and then also when i explain some of this i'll do just a tiny bit of shading on the side okay so at this point i am going to try to concentrate my best on the shape of my mom's eye so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take it up i'm going to try to follow her shape and this is where you need to take your time and make sure that you slow down and try to follow if you pay attention to her contour it kind of curves up like this so it goes round up and then it comes down somewhere about right here. And then it comes down to this area. So I'm just gonna try to get the shape that I see here. She's wearing a little bit of makeup in this picture. My mom was never a heavy makeup wear. You know, she didn't wear a lot of makeup, but she did wear some. So I'm not gonna look at that. I'm just looking at the outline of the actual shape first, okay? And this can probably be a little bit higher too. So I'm gonna change that. This is where you're going to take your time and try to follow what you see on your pictures. So I'm going to work my way around and try to get the shape that I see of my mom. If I look at right here, she does have this shape. So I'm just going to try to follow it. Actually lowers just slightly for her tear duct. And then the other thing I also have to pay attention to, like when we're drawing our faces and so forth, and this is why right now we're just drawing it kind of small, but when you draw it larger to fit the actual paper of the eight by 10, uh, you guys do need to make sure that you um, make it bigger because if not adding all of these details, remember when we were doing the eyes, is gonna be a lot more difficult for you guys, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay attention to how much white I actually see on her eye. And if I'm looking at hers, I'm gonna go ahead and notice that the bottom of her eye, if we look at it, gets slightly covered as well as the majority of the top part of the iris and so forth. So how much white is actually showing is somewhere about like right here if I'm drawing it, you know, like where does it lie on this particular eye? Somewhere about right here is about the amount of white that I see because I still have a little bit of shading. So these are little things that you need to be aware of because look at how the tip of her eye is right here and then she's got some shadows on the white part of the eye. So try your best to follow that. She does have the double line. So we do see because especially how she's wearing makeup you can kind of see a little bit of spacing between that. So when we get to that part for the shading, I need that double line in order to make it look a little bit more like her. Now, if I'm looking at the highlights in her eyes, the size of picture, like if I were to zoom in on this, I know it's kind of difficult for you guys to see, but you could still kind of see it there. Like if I move around, let's see if I can play with the lighting. Um, so she has a highlight here and here. Um, I think it kind of showed it a little bit right there on the video. So if you rewind it when I post it, you, you'll be able to see that it's got two highlights. It's hard, like I said, it's hard to see on the video quality. Let me see if I can do it again, because you might be able to, maybe if I move the phone a little. No, but I mean, I see it. So I can see that she has two highlights. She's got a highlight like right here. And then she's got another highlight right here, which is probably indicative of the actual flash that took the original photograph, okay? So uh, eyelid, we also noticed that uh, like, and I'm again, I, right now I zoomed in. I don't recommend doing that unless you're doing something like this that I'm already at the point of doing um, you know, the actual characteristics and the detail of it. And this is just for me to be able to tell how much distance is actually from the original line that I drew to the top. So that might be okay 
to zoom in on, but you don't want to do a lot of the zooming in. So I'm just going to use it right now since I already have it zoomed in to get the shape. Notice that on my mom, and I actually have this too, I get this quality, the shape of eye from her because on the eyelid, it goes up and then it goes a little bit flat, like straight, and then it curves slightly down here. So I'm just trying to get the shape that I see of hers and then I will zoom out. I don't recommend zooming in for like, okay, now I'm gonna move to the next eye, moving it to the eye and trying to draw in it because you should see it all together. The only time that if you're going to do the zoom in would be for that. Like it's difficult for me to see the shape of her eye lid. Okay, if I wanna zoom in because I already have the outline drawn, that's just like a little extra, then that's okay if you do that. But don't zoom in if I haven't drawn the original shape, okay? Which is what you need to see the whole entire thing for. So now that I have that first eye, I'll go ahead and I'll draw the second one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try my best to follow the shape of her other eye. And it does go slightly a little bit above, like if I'm looking at the actual uh, shape, it goes above, it goes a little bit flat. And then as it comes down here to the corner, it curves down as well. Let me erase a little bit of this line that kind of got in the way because I wanna make sure I see this curve. So if I don't see it with that other double line I accidentally drew, then I need to erase it. So remember that this little dot was for my tear duct. So I can't go beyond that for the tear duct because if I go beyond that, then I am going to lose the spacing that I have in the center, okay? So I'm gonna bring that down. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to try my best to follow the shape of her eye. Now, right now we're keeping it light because if for some reason it does not look like her at the very end, you're gonna wanna manipulate a little bit of these lines and really study it and say, what is off? Like, what doesn't really look like her? What do I need to go back and change? Uh, the eyelid is very small, you know, so I don't, she shouldn't have a lot of eyelid. You know, this one's a lot smaller too. I can actually bring this down maybe just a little bit more as far as the shape of her eyelid. So if I want to erase that top, I can. I don't want to erase the bottom yet because that's going to help guide me for some of these other shadows that I have to incorporate with her. But again, we're just comparing to the pictures. So even then it's a little bit smaller. It's like a little bit right here, but I'm not going to erase it yet because that's going to help me compare when I get to there. Okay. So for the other eye, same thing, like I said, like if you want to zoom in, that's fine at this point because I already have the major outline. The rest is just looking at it to be able to get the shape. Uh, when I zoom in, you can notice, you know, as I see it full versus zoomed in, it kind of fooled me a little bit because she's got her makeup. So she's got the eyeliner that you don't really see. So if I were to have zoomed out, she might look like she has a thinner um, eyelid, but the fact is, is that she's wearing makeup. So it makes it look a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to follow more or less the same size as the other one. The only difference is now I'm following the shape. So I'm gonna bring up the shape because it goes up to here and then it kind of comes a little flat. So that's where I change it because it's round for the lid with the eyeball, but it comes like this and then it curves down like that. So I can erase that top part because I'm not gonna need it anymore after I start with my shading. That will no longer be apparent. I'm going to bring this out just a little bit and I'll erase that because that line is kind of fooling you on the video. So I'm not attaching it. The line stops right here and this is where my eye ends. So don't attach them because that flap of skin does not attach. Okay. So I'm going to pay attention to the amount of white I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of start more or less where this one is, which is somewhere about right here. She's looking a little bit off to the side. So there's more white on this side than there is on this side. So I want to make sure that I follow, again, what I see. Notice that the bottom of her eye, again, is being covered slightly. So if I feel like, oh, you know what? That's about the same size as this one over here. I just have to make sure that I make the, the eyelid just a little bit smaller. So if I want to change the shape, this is the time to do it, OK? I'm just going to go and just tap it just to erase a little bit of that line. And then just go back and forth and try your best to get the outline shape as well as you can. Now, again, you can't see the highlight. I can, but she does have two little highlights. So she's got one major one right here. And then she's got another one right here. 
And then remember I told you guys that those of you guys that have brown eyes, you still have the iris that's in the middle. It's just hard to see, but I can see it more clear than you guys probably can on the video. So where I see it, because I can see the different grays, which is harder to see on the video, she has her, her um, iris somewhere about right here. Like this is where I actually see the iris. And then if I come to this one, same thing, I didn't draw the iris. So I see less of it on this side just because of the highlight, but I still see a little bit of it on the bottom. So I'm gonna just add those just to have them. And eye placement, that's how you know where to get the eye placement. Am I gonna have to adjust? Yes, because I think like this, if I compare it to the shape here, is a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to just change the shape slightly on that. I'm gonna make sure that I take this off and then also same thing for this. I'm going to take this off and I'm just gonna just kind of change the shape. And like I said, go back and forth with it until you feel comfortable and you feel like it really looks like that particular person, okay? Eyebrows, totally different story. I'm not getting to the eyebrows just yet. Are we going to add them today? Yes, because I need to show you guys how to get the placement for those. However, we need to get the rest of the face in there first before we can even accommodate for that, okay? So when I'm doing this, what I need to do is uh, for the nose, this is again, what people are doing when they're using their um, pencil, like up, a, like they like squint with one eye and they're kind of going like this, you know, but at an arm's distance. And this is what they're doing to the face. So what they're doing is, is that they're comparing, this is the major thing that people use it for. They put the tip of the pencil right at the middle of the nose where that cross is. And then they use either their thumb or this finger, whichever is easier. Usually most people will use the thumb and they'll just kind of like get a more or less distance from the middle of the nose to here. And then what they do is, is that they'll go like this sometimes, but I think for the video purpose, it's a little bit easier like that. So I'll get the measurement here, which is somewhere about right there. And then I'm gonna come right here and come down to the nose and see how far down does it go, which right here in the middle, there was still a little bit of distance between. So I'm gonna do the same thing now to my, uh, and, and just a reminder, see, I just did that right now. So I'm gonna change it, even though technically it would still be the same. I just wanna make sure that I do it like this because I zoomed out and that's another thing. If you have it zoomed out, zoomed in, it's just better to go all the way out when you do this. Uh, I was trying to keep it, you know, it, it technically will be the same, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand that when you do it, try to do it like this. So I'll do it one more time. So I'm going to come here just so you can see it would still be the same. And if I come right here to the actual measurement in the middle, you can see that it's almost right there, right to the, to like oh, right there about the ball of the nose. So when I come to my drawing, I'm going to do the same thing now. Remember we're in different, um, as far as the size. So it's gonna be a different on my, on my actual pencil, but it still should fall the same here. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna put it right in the middle, right here on the tip. So that way, uh, when I come, and let me just scoot this just a little bit, so that way it's the same on your all, so you can see on the video. Then when I come right here, I'm gonna come right there. So I know that the bottom should be somewhere here which means I have to go a little bit below. So the line of the nose is gonna be more or less right there, okay? Now, this is the bottom of the nose. So I already showed you guys how to draw the nose and that was basically with the ball. So I'm gonna draw the ball of her nose, more or less the size that I were to see. Remember, I'm drawing darker than you guys should. So be very careful with that, okay? And then the thing that I didn't get a chance to explain to you guys as far as the, this part, now that we have the eyes in place, remember how I told you guys that the only part of the nose that you guys should be drawing is the bottom only. That's still true to this. However, now you got to pay attention to what this actually is. So if I look at this, and it's okay to zoom in at this point, just because I already have where the line should be. But what I'm going to do is I am going to take this part of the nose and go up straight to where does it fall on my eyes, which is like right here, more or less where the eyeball starts. So if I come right here to the eyeball and I come directly straight down, this is where and how far I should take the nose, the nostril. So I'm just gonna draw a little line that goes right there. 
Same thing for this one. So I'm going to come up and see where does it fall actually a little bit before that circle. So I'm going to come right here a little bit before the circle come down so I know how far this part of the nose should fall on. I'm just drawing little tiny, uh, just little tiny lines because they're just there as a guide so I know how far to take that particular part. Okay. Then I'm going to follow the structure of her nose. So pay attention because on this, where we're actually looking at her dead straight on, you know, everybody has a different nose. I don't see a lot of her nostril. It's just the bottom shape. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to concentrate on the shape of her nose first. And then I am going to come around this way. And then I'm going to come around. This is the outside. So I'm going to get the shape that I see. And this is as much as I am going to draw. Again, I don't see a lot of the bottom of her nose over here for the nostril. So it's going to stay like that. Then I'm going to come this way. Come across and then just draw the shape that I see here. Remember, I'm not going to draw the original circle down here because that's all shading. So I'm just going to follow what I see for the shading once I get that to that part. Okay. So now that I kind of have more or less the outline of her nose, to get the mouth is the same thing, except you're going backwards. So the way we did this for the eyes, we went up, down. Now we're going to go down, up, because I have the structure of my nose drawn here, and I don't have the mouth. So it's always by what don't you have first versus what you do have. So I want to, and I told you guys that I always do the picture of my mom that shows teeth. When I originally draw this, it is going to look funny as I start. However, uh, what I need you guys to understand is that as I'm going here with the bottom of the mouth, so I'm going to go by her teeth first, and I'm going to get this measurement, and then I'm going to go up from the bottom of the nose. Where does it fall? Somewhere a little bit uh, towards the middle. So now I'm going to go backwards. If I went this way, Hold on, guys. Okay. Hold on. So up. Okay, so I'll go over that information that they went just in case you guys didn't get a chance to hear it after the video. Okay, guys, uh, but it's just about testing just in case you didn't get a chance to kind of understand what she was talking about. Um, okay, so let's just continue. So at this point, what we're going to end up doing is, like I said, we're going to take this measurement, go up, and you can see where it kind of a little bit half on the nose. Then you're going to go backwards on the actual um, picture here. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take a measurement right more or less where it landed. Then I'm going to come down here, and then we're going to end up putting it right there where my finger is more or less. So somewhere about like right here, okay? So that's the bottom of the teeth. Now I gotta do where the actual teeth lie. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to just base it off of what I already have drawn. So if I wanna take the measurement from like here where the teeth are to where the nose lies, that's fine because then I can kind of come over here now and accommodate. This is where it lies on the nose. This is where it lies on the top part of the mouth. So I'm just going to put a small little line right there. Same thing goes for this part. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare this part of the lip, which is small because she's, she's smiling. So yeah, it's gonna stretch. And then I can kind of compare it to where it lies on the teeth, which is somewhere about right here. So as long as you compare to something you've already have drawn, when I come right here and I do my measurement, then I'll know exactly where the top of my mouth is going to be. So that's how you get the measurements of things 
as you're drawing. You compare to what you already have drawn. Bottom lip, same thing. I'm actually gonna compare my bottom lip maybe to my teeth here. So if you're not sure, like let's say you have your um, drawing, it's almost, it's probably just a little bit bigger than the teeth if I'm looking at the bottom of her mouth. And I come up here and I put that just a tiny bit bigger. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna just go just a tiny bit bigger. And then I'm gonna come right here and then put like right here. So that way I can kind of get a more or less and that'll give you the distance for that, okay? If you're doing yours and you cannot figure out exactly what to do on yours, Set. that's why you guys should send me those photographs so I can look at it and tell you, okay, we'll compare this to this. And as you guys are drawing your own, I can help you with yours when you get to that. Remember, this is just a practice. So I just need you guys trying it out. If it comes out great, if it doesn't, like I said, I'll, I'll help you guys with the changes that you need to do for your final, which is why I recommended that you do it to your original um, images in the first place, okay? Now, if I see the distance that I have right now from the bottom of the lip to the chin, that's gonna be a really little tiny chin. Like that would be like right here. So just because we drew the original shape originally doesn't mean we're gonna follow it 100%. It's just there as a guide. So this is why I say, just make sure that you're going by what you've already drawn. And then at this point, I can compare the bottom of the chin to something else. So if I get the chin here, Let's just say from the bottom of the mouth to the bottom of the chin. And then I go from here, the bottom lip up to the nose. You see how it kind of sits a little bit above the nose. Then I go backwards. I know this is the bottom of my lip. So I'm going to come up somewhere about right here. Then I come down and look at the difference on that. My chin actually should be somewhere down here. Okay. So at this point, if I kind of want to just so that way I have something to go by, I can extend my shape just a little bit lower and erase the original one if I want. If Again, if you do these light enough, there's no need for erasing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, just so that way you guys don't get confused when we start uh, you know, drawing everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. And mine's gonna be a little bit bigger than my finger length, and that's okay, because then I can actually accommodate uh, some of the detail work, okay? Now, for the edges of the mouth, this is the same thing as the edge of the nose. So I want to just, and again, I'm not drawing it straight. I'm drawing it with a tilt. So I'm just going to take this up straight where I would with my line. So this line, so I'm just kind of going like this. I'm keeping it straight with this just to make it more simple on myself. And I'm going to take this up. And if I notice it kind of actually, I went a little bit crooked. So I want to make sure that it sits somewhere right here on this part of the eye if I'm coming straight down somewhere a little bit beyond the middle, probably somewhere kind of like where this particular part. So if I come down and I draw a little line, I can see that it's gonna be somewhere here as far as the edge of my mouth. So if I, I'm drawing the line just a little bit longer because I don't know exactly where I'm gonna take it and I wanna make sure that I know exactly uh, where to go with it, okay? Same thing on this side. So I'm gonna zoom in. You guys should do it just generally. I'm zooming in so you can see on the camera, but. Uh, I wouldn't zoom in for this part just because we're trying to accommodate, but because I've done this before, I know exactly what to look for. So we're going again here. We're just going to go up. So let me take it straight up. And this one falls on this side of the actual iris. So I'm just going to come to this line, bring it down, make sure I'm straight with that line, and then just draw my little line. So I know that when I go up, it's somewhere about right here. Okay. So now at this point, what I'm going to end up doing is I am going to draw starting already with the shape of my lip. So this is the top lip. This is the, the edge of the top lip. This are my teeth. And this is my bottom lip over here. So at this point, now I'm going to concentrate on the shape of her mouth. And I'm just, this is all about contour. Same thing like what we did with the eyes and the bottom of the nose. I'm just looking at it, see how it curves and then it curves this way, it curves and it curves this way for her smile. So I'm gonna try my best to get it as close as possible. And let me just make sure that I straighten this up to make sure that it's going together. I'm gonna zoom out actually on this part just to make sure that I can follow it 100%. So this is the top part of my mouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the curve and then notice it curves this way. This is why I extended these lines slightly because I need to make sure that I go with the face, not necessarily those lines I drew. So if I have to draw them a little bit bigger, that's fine. This one drops slightly. So I wanna make sure that I take the same shape of what I see for her. So I need to erase that a little bit. 
keep it light because if you guys end up having to erase and change things, then you have the option of doing so with not leaving marks behind. So on her, her actual upper lip doesn't have that much of a uh, shape as far as the, the V shape, you know, because she's smiling big. So it stretches out. I believe that part of me, I got from my father because she has less than I do. I think my dad's the one with the lip that has that sharp V shape. So I'm gonna come here and then it does go slightly up over here towards the end. And then the same thing on this side, she has very, very little lip. And I think I drew this one a little bit too low. So I'm gonna bring it up just slightly. And I'm just gonna work that shape until I get the shape that I think looks just like my mom. So I'm just gonna go back and forth and making sure that that line looks like her. I think this probably got a little too high on me. So I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. So at this point, um, I'm not gonna do the teeth just yet. I'm gonna do the lower lip at this point. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm actually, like I'm looking at it back and forth and I can see the little mistake. So like I said, this is the time to go back and change it now. Don't wait till later when you start all of the shading. So if you notice little mistakes, this is the time to go back and change it, okay? So I'm gonna do the lower lip now at this point. When I'm doing the lower lip, uh, again, I wanna start off with this part of the lip here. So I'm gonna try my best to get that shape first. So I notice it comes back this way. And then it kind of straightens off here and then it goes a little bit back this way. And then the bottom, if I'm paying attention to the shape, it actually, she has kind of a little bit of a crooked smile and I wanna make sure I incorporate that, otherwise it's not gonna look like her. So she has a little bit bigger of a lip this way and it comes like that. And then over here, it tightens up and gets a little bit smaller. So it's a little bit bigger on this side versus this side. You can kind of see that in the picture here. So if I'm not drawing those little things, guys, it's not gonna look like my mom. So this is why I need to make sure that I go back and follow the outline as best as I can to make sure that it looks like it. Like if I'm looking at the nose, do you see how it curves a little bit more than the shape I did? So these are, again, the things that you have to go back and forth with and kind of tweak and before you start the shading. Because if you start the shading, that's never gonna change. It's always gonna stay there, okay? So for the teeth, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna pay attention. Now, her head is a little bit tilted. So if I'm looking at the center line with her teeth, they don't line up 100% directly in the center. They're just a little bit off. So this part's gonna look very funny. I can guarantee you that. Because I always get that, man, it looks like she's growing mold on, the, on like her teeth. Well, that's because it doesn't have shading yet. Now, it is very important to keep it as light as possible. So I'm actually gonna zoom in for this because I am gonna keep it light because if I don't keep it light, it will look off, okay? So on the teeth structure, you're not gonna be able to see this too well, but you can kind of tell what I'm doing here. I'm gonna keep this very, as light as possible. So very, very light. I'm not gonna do it too dark because the darker I do it, then yeah, the more it's gonna look like she's got mold. So I'm gonna follow what I see, you know, the gum line, I see a little bit of gum here. I, that's not gonna be for everybody. Some people won't see the gum line. So it's only if you see it, I'm gonna try to follow the shape of her teeth. I noticed that on the bottom of this tooth, she does have a little bit of shadows right here in between the tooth and the lip. So I gotta make sure I include that as well. So I'm gonna come over here. And even before I do the shape of the teeth, I wanna make sure I count to see exactly how many I see. So there's one, two, and a little bit of three. So I'm gonna just do the lines first. So one, two, and then there's a little bit of three. The rest is all gum and shadows. So I'm gonna just concentrate now on the shape. Now that I have the separation between the teeth, I'm gonna keep it as light as I can. I see a little bit of the bottom. I see this over here. Then it comes this way. I see the bottom and I see this one right here. And then on the opposite side, it's the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to come and I'm gonna kind of say, count how many. So I have one, two, three, and I see a little bit of four. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, and then I see a little bit of four. And then I'll concentrate on the top shapes. 
So this one kind of goes like this. And then she's got this one, which I think is the pointier one. She's got another little shadow right here. And then the rest is all shadow work towards the back. So yes, it's gonna look a little funny at first, but once I apply the shadows, that's where things are gonna start making sense, okay? So at this point, now I have, uh, you know, this structure of the face. Now I'm gonna start doing the shape of her chin. So I'm going to look at, this is where I was telling you guys, that when you get to this part, let me focus, make sure that it's 100% focused on this. You wanna make sure that you compare, like where does it start to curve? So I noticed that the main part of the curve does follow here down on the bottom. So I'm gonna just draw that slight curve that she's got on the bottom. And then this is the part, if I compare up to where her mouth is, this is the part. So right here where this little tooth is, I'm gonna come down, so I'm right about there. This is the part that starts to come up where the dimple is as well as where the cheek is. So I'm gonna bring this already structured up. I'm not looking at the dimple yet. Right now I'm looking at that side of the cheek. Her dimple lies, like if I compare here, somewhere about right here where her eye structure is. So now that I have all this drawn out, now I'm gonna compare everything else to where things lie. So I know I gotta come straight down. This is gonna be more or less her dimple. So I'm just drawing a line right now, but it's all shading. So that's why I keep it light. If you have to erase the other lines because they're already distracting you, like the ones that are here, then you can erase already because it's gonna be all shading anyways. Um, if I notice how far this comes and where does it start to curve up? If I come up, it's a little bit right here. So right here is where it starts to curve. This is where I'm gonna draw the edge of her cheek. Notice that the contour goes up and then out. So if you're not following the contours, the shape of the actual face, it's not gonna look like them. So it goes curved in and then out. And then notice that by like, remember we haven't done her eyebrows yet. So this is gonna start to curve in this direction where it'll start getting closer to here. But I'm not drawing that yet. I'm stopping there because I still have to do her eyebrows at this point, okay? So let's take a look at where her other um, falls. Like if I'm, again, we're going by the line, the original line. So if I come here and I come up, it's a little bit beyond the eye. So I'm gonna go a little bit beyond the eye, come straight down just so I can kind of have a marking. As far as the height, you can compare it to the rest that's already drawn. So it's gonna be somewhere about like right here. I'm going to have that shadow. If I want to put a little bit of gray, because it's not really a line, guys, uh, it's by the shadow. So if I'd rather, instead of a line, already put a little gray in there to mark it. So I know once I start the shading, that's probably preferable. Okay. Now she has very strong lap lines, like these little areas over here that uh, structure the face. So if I want to just put, again, a little bit of gray to document where those are going to lie, I can kind of put that, and that'll start kind of helping it look a little bit more like them. Same thing for this side. She has a very strong laugh line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there with her smile. Just a more or less of where it lies. So when I start with the other shading, it'll look more like her. Okay, now for the side of the other face, same thing. Where does it start to curve up? Somewhere about right here where this part, and I'm gonna erase this because I don't want it to look like one of those, um, you know, the, what they have, the ventriloquist dummies, like those, <laughs> if I have lines coming down the side of face, that's what it's gonna look like. It's supposed to be shading. So I'm erasing that at this point, but this is where it starts to curve. So I'm gonna start drawing her shape of the face on this side. Then if I pay attention to where this curve is, like where it curves to the side of the face, somewhere about right here where the mouth is. So you're just basically comparing where do things lie with what you've already drawn? And the more that I get of the face, the more it's going to start looking like, especially the shading, because I haven't done any of the shading of the nose just yet. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of shading on that part, just because I want it to start looking more like my mother. And that's a very important part. So what I want to do is I kind of want to judge the distance between where this shadow is. And I'm going to start off with just putting a little bit of shadow on the nose. You guys already know how to shade this because remember we start from here and we get the shadows. So when you guys start with yours, you should be able to apply uh, those shadows with no problem. Right now, like I said, I'm just gonna put a little bit just so I can show you about the eyebrows, but you need to do all the shading first before you apply the eyebrows, just, just FYI, okay? So I'm just gonna bring 
a little bit of this down just so it starts to look like her with the shadow work. You guys are, again, you should already know how to do this. You follow what you see and you get the shadow work, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of that because I wanna show you guys how to do the eyebrows when we get to there, okay? So I'm just gonna put a little bit just so that way you guys can see the structure. So what you'll do is, of course, you do the shading that falls around here first. So I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow work here. Just be very light with it. Same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna put just a little bit of shadow work. Now, when you're done with all the shading around this particular area, then you're going to, to get the, the actual uh, shape, do a light, and we're talking about light. So look at the distance right here, which is a little bit lower. It's actually somewhere about right here. You're gonna do a very light outline of the shape. So I'm gonna to try to get the shape of my mother's eyebrow, which if I compare distance, it's somewhere about right here. And I'm keeping it very light just because of the fact being that when you do eyebrows, guys, this is what's gonna make or break the person. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those memes where they take off the eyebrows from like famous people and they look really funny because that's like a major structure part of the face. Without the eyebrows, we don't look the way we do. So you do need to make sure that you apply the correct shape first, which is why I say do the outline first. So that's more or less my mom's eyebrow shape, more or less. I could probably fix it a little bit more, um, but you were just trying to you know, do this so that way it's a, as an example for when you guys follow yours. Same thing for the other side. So I would try to compare how, what is the distance from here to here on my picture. Try my best to look at where do things curve. Look how it's right here about right where the center of the eye is. So this is where the curve starts to happen. From this way, curve it down. Same thing right here. I'm going to go ahead and go up and then curve it down this way just to kind of get a more or less shape. You know, even the eyes, I can go back and kind of change. Like I said, once you get this, if it doesn't look 100% like them, this is the moment that you should go back and kind of change some of the stuff. But I'm just showing you how to put the face together. But just know that, okay? So once you have the eyebrows, then what you're going to do is you're going to say how, how dark are they? And you, what you want to do is pick the medium gray first, which would be somewhere about right here for my mom if I'm adding the texture. And all hair is done the same way. So what you do is you look at where are my highlights, add that gray first, then pay attention to which direction does the actual hair move. Because some people, if you've ever paid attention to eyebrows, some hairs go up, some hairs go down. If you've noticed, some people have hair going down and up. And if you don't do the correct definition of the way that the hair moves, it's not going to look like them, okay? So what I'll do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to follow the direction that my mom's hair moves. And this is where I can actually go and darken it and make it a lot darker to the actual uh, darkness of her eyebrow, which is very, very dark because she has makeup on her eyebrows here. So, and then of course the bottom hairs go in the downward position. So you're just following strand by strand. If you have to go back and make some a little bit darker just to kind of give levels on it, that's how you do hair just in general, okay? So at this point, now you can see that I'm a little bit more closer to, and even then the eyebrow probably should have done it. I think I added a couple of extra hairs. So I'm a little bit closer to where this should lie. I wanna make sure that I also get the shape of the forehead. So on hers, we don't see the whole forehead because of her hair. So for the hair, for those people that, um, this goes for guys and girls, uh, I wanna make sure that I follow the hairline. Notice that right here, is where she has the little copete, her little uh, bang, comes this way. It comes down and then there's another hair that kind of goes like this and it covers slightly her eyebrow here. So these are just little things that you do need to go back and forth. Of course, if you were to go back and add the shading on, uh, on some of this stuff, of course, you guys, it will look a lot more like the person. So the more shading you add, just the more it's going to look like them. Okay, and I will be finishing the shading on this with you guys uh, on Wednesday. I just wanted to show you at least putting the outline. That's where I'm giving you the test grade. So when we come back on, on uh, Wednesday, I'm gonna do another video of all the shading on this. We're just doing outline for today, okay? So at this point, outline of the head, 
same thing. I'm gonna compare where does the neck fall somewhere about like right here. So this would be the size of the neck here. If I look on this side, it's a little bit shorter, falls somewhere about like right here where she has her uh, other dimple on this side. Uh, we see a little bit of her hair come on this side. So you see a little bit of structure of hair here. Then we see the outline. And so we're gonna draw the outline first before we even attempt. Uh, again, she shows a little bit of ear right here and you wanna compare to where that part falls with the face and that's where you'll know where to draw it. She does have a little bit of her earring showing. So she's got the earring right here that I would have to draw. Then her hair comes over like this. It kind of curls a little bit to the back. So her hair looks like this as far as the structure on the bottom. I'm gonna draw the line a little bit darker so you can see it on film, but you guys keep it as light as possible, okay? And then her hair goes up. Now, if you wanna compare the way we've been doing, I can see where, how high her hair goes compared to the, what I've already drawn on the face. So when I come here on the face and I go up on the hair, look at how big my mom's hair is. So she does have a big hairdo and they used to have this hairdo back in the day. So I'm gonna just draw the line very, very lightly because I will be adding the shading and so forth. Uh, when we come back on a Wednesday so I can show you guys how to do the texture of the hair. So I'm going to erase this one over here because it kind of got into my drawing. So you guys already saw that on the first part of the video, if you're going to be doing something like that. So if I'm like I said, I'm going to pay attention to the contour. I'm drawing my line dark because I want you guys to be able to see on the video, but you guys keep it light for your practice, but you can kind of see more or less the shape there of what is going on for this particular portrait, okay? And that's how we kind of get the shapes and so forth. Of course, all this stuff is gonna get erased because you know we don't need those lines anymore. And uh, shading wise, like I said, I will do another video where I'm gonna shade a little bit more, especially for people who are going to do teeth. If you're not happy with your outline because you were drawing somebody that you know, if you guys need to go back and fix it, Make sure you fix your outline before we start the shading. And again, this is just a practice. You guys are gonna do the final uh, starting if you guys are ready to go for Wednesday because you already have your outline perfect for yours. All you have to do is submit it to me. And if I give you the go ahead, then on Wednesday, you can start the final. If I don't give you the go ahead, you're gonna have to wait at least until next week to start on the final portrait, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video 